Greetings comrades, Soviet Gaming here. Today we are doing our Kingdom 2 mount guide. So I will tell you how Awakening works, how to make the mount that's the best for your current build and so on and so on. So watch this video till the end. So okay, let's start with the basics. You have two types of mounts in the game. First one is free to play mount. Those are being rewarded to you for free. You can buy them at the auction house. So all of those guys are considered to be free to play mounts. Now there is a pay to win mount, it's been in the costume and mount store as a pay to win mount, you can craft them, you can try to draw him, the chances aren't really high and uh, I don't know if any free to play guys got them, but it's really hard to get one. To craft him you need a lot of materials, it's like double the size of the costume, so it's, it's really crazy price. What's the difference between free to play and pay to win mount? As far as I understand, free-to-play mounts don't have that special golden bonus when they awaken being guaranteed to them. So yeah, all of those mounts, all of the free-to-play mounts don't have anything special about them, but pay-to-win mounts guarantee when you awaken them to give you special bonus that will be the golden skill basically, and it's really really good. But yeah, as a free-to-play guy, you can't hope for those because the chances are pretty slim. To better they don't disclose the chances, but I think it's like lower than 1%. So there we go, I have this uh, prairie ship, Plateau Airland, and there is one more mount in my inventory. This unidentified power breather, and it says it gives 40% speed, so I want the 60% one. Let's use it and see what we will get. Yeah, we got the 60% one, so don't mind what's written there. I don't know if this speed is RNG based or it's for the rare mounts, but yeah, now we have three mounts available, yeah, let's use it. Since all of those have the same speed bonus over here, 60%, it doesn't matter which one we will use, so they are all the same, they don't fly, they all, even the flying mounts, they just ride, they just hover on top of the ground, so they won't kinda let you fly around like in World of Warcraft, unluckily. The reins over here, when you level them up, they carry over from one mount to another, so it's basically a multiplier to the mount's basic stats over here. So you have to fortify it when you can, it won't harm you in the long run, it's only helpful. So feel free to fortify it as much as possible. Let's move on to the most important part of the mounts, awakening. So we have this goat over here and I already messed up the build already because I invested different potions over here, you don't want to do that. Um, I'll make example how you want to do that on the next mount, but this one will be defensive and since I'm going the attack route, defensive one isn't that important for me, so I'll go for defense and HP. So basically when you awaken in the mount, you want to go one of two routes. First one, you can go single stat and have the lowest amount of other stats as possible. So if I'll get lucky, that will give me double stat defense and HP mount. But if I fail, I want to get, if it will be the single property one, I want it to be defensive one. So I want to lower HP a little bit so the amount of those score for the defense will be higher than the one for the HP. Okay, we, we put the defense ones over here, it's 732, so let's get, um, bleh, how many is those? So let's get 724 over here. There we go, so this way, if we will fail and we will get one property, we will get the defense one. If there will be two of those, that will be defense and HP. Evasion here is a mistake, you don't want to do that. I'll talk a little bit more on the success rates and amount of potions you want to use later on when we will be making the attack one. So now let's just awaken this one and see how it will go, if we'll get lucky, if it will fail or not. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Come on. Come on. Mount Petigute, Awakening failed, so we lost the mount. We lost that poor thing and we got nothing, that's how the chances work. We can resurrect him for 500 diamonds, I won't do that right now because I don't really want to waste that on him. What I really want to do, I want to make this Pyro Breather an attack mount. Ok, now the proper guide. First of all, there is a major difference between pay to win and free to play mount. For the pay to win mount, you need half amount of those potions per stat. So, if you want to have the higher chance of uh, making your mount really OP, you will need only 125. For the free to play, you want to have 250 of those, so that's kinda crazy, right? Now, if it's our first mount and we just want to get the basic attack mount and we don't want to fail it, there are two ways. You can either put 50 attack potential potions over here and you'll get 100% chance to unlock one property. So if you'll go this way, you won't ever fail the mount. If we go higher to get the S ranked one, it will already 
have the lower chance of success. So right now, if we go for the higher rarity mount for higher rating one, that will increase our overall stats, like the base stats of the mount, so we will get higher attack. I think it's twice as much for the S than for D. We already have 73% of success and only 4% to unlock two properties. So we have 23% chance of failing this. And if we'll go for something like this, this is the ultimate attack mount, attack and critical, and that gives us only 38% of success with one property and 9% chance of unlocking two properties so it's really really risky most likely i will fail with my luck it's non-existent so yeah for pay to win mount it will be 125 of each that will guarantee you to get the s ranking and the chances of success will be way higher so that's why pay to win is way easier but since we are free to play we are going all in hardcore with those stats and there we go we have 38 percent chance of success and nine percent of the failure before moving in and spending that and failing that i want to explain how the stats are awarded to the mount so if you're going for the single stat the one that have the most potential over here will be the one that will be awarded so for example we have 996 over here and 999 over here and we will get the single stat one we will get the critical one if we have the same amount of stats on all of those, it will go in the order of preference, starting with attack, then critical, then HP, then defense, then evasion. Okay, I hope we're clear on that one. If we want the double stat mount, we want to risk it. We want to have the main stat higher than the secondary one. That will be the problem if you want to go for all S rankings for the free-to-play, because you gotta go full in and you can't increase it higher than that, so... Uh, 250 is the maximum and 999 is the maximum amount of potential so if I want the critical as my main stat and attack as a secondary one and in case if it will go for one property I want to go this so there is a higher chance of getting the crit potential but it will get the lower attack potential over here so we'll get only a attack potential and that is not really good so I guess it's either all in or not so yeah, I will go all in with all the stats and I will hope that I'll get that 9% chance of success or at least get the one property for S attack because right now I only have the D attack ranked mount and it's giving me 1.1k attack at this 61 level so S1 will give me 2.2 attack so that's pretty cool. So yeah, before I'll do this I won't be able to get back to the screen after that because I'll fail miserably. Yeah, for the highest EP basically if you want just the EP you want to go for attack and defense because defense and attack have the highest amount of ep per stat but i strongly recommend going for attack and critical for the damage dealers and going for defense hp or evasion hp for the tanks based on their main stats so basically defense for dragoons and evasion for shinobis and the uh, nymphs so yeah but i'll go for attack and critical Woo, here goes nothing uh awaken uh, let's see oh my god it will be a major failure guys i'm pretty sure about that with my luck I won't get anything. Awakening success. Okay, we got the single stat one, so it was already better than it would be. Now we have this mount, he's an S stat. Okay, I was a bit wrong. It's not double amount of attack, but it's still a good boost. If I counted it right, it's 66% increase, which is still pretty good. Now, when you awaken your mount, you get those secondary stats over here. Those are pretty much random, but you can change them around. I guess I want to change that. In order to change that, we want to select one of the stats over here, for example this one, and we are picking another mount that we have awakened already. And we will randomly get one of those things in that slot. Actually all of those bonuses are horrible, so I won't do that, but yeah, that's how you change those things on your main mount. It's a long process. Building a mount is goddamn headache and it's really hard for free-to-play player, but at least I got the S attack one, so it's already pretty, pretty good. When you inherit the stat, though, your mount that's kinda being the donor over here, the source mount, will be consumed. So he will be out and you won't be able to get it back. He will be out for good, guys. And yeah, you can revitalize the failed craft, but if your awakening was successful and your mount got to the single stat, but you wanted the double stat, you're done, you won't be able to roll him back and do it again. So it's really expensive, even for the pay to win, guys, you will have to get the new pay to win mount in order to try it again, so yeah, it's not that easy, guys. You can also salvage the old and failed mounts as well, and that will give you a minor amount of those crystals, like 
uh, it's giving me 20 per mount, that's not that much. But yeah, this is one of the options if you have way too many mounts, I guess, I don't know, uh, I have only three, I haven't got lucky yet to get any more of those, so that's it. Alright, so I think we're done with the mount system over here, let's talk a little bit about how to get those mounts. There are actually several ways to get them, first one is Guild War. At the end of the season, number one guild will get this uh, Sky River pack and everybody will get uh, Sky River over here. Increased potential to 500 to reach grade S. Hmm, it looks like pay to win mount actually. So this one, I guess, can be properly uh, awakened with lower amount of potions. So that's pretty cool. All other top 10 guilds will get some of the Sky River scales. They have been used to craft one and the blueprint. I'm not really sure how many scales do we need. But over time, you will get that Sky River as well. Another way to get them is buy them on the auction house. I really don't recommend it because it, this is just a normal mount, they are not paid to win. You have to use full amount of those uh, potions to wake them up. And there is one more way. There we go, it's in the partner's cohension. Over here we are guaranteed to get the magic crystal pack. And there is a rare chance to get mystery back with the mount. So that's how I got my pyro breather back in the day. So this is another way how you can get your mounts for free. And I think that's it, I'm pretty sure there are no other ways to get them, if you know that, let me know in the comments. Now let's talk a little bit about how to get those potions for the mount upgrades, first one is get them in the partner's Kahenshin, that's obvious right, that's your main source. Second one is this mysterious merchant over here. If you really really want to awaken your mount, you can buy them over here. I was usually buying them with diamonds and the gold, because I really want to make this video and I really wanted to end my mount chase and I'm done, I'm not going for the double stat one anymore because it's it's headache, it's so hard to get all those things. For me it took about two months of playing this game to get everything that I need to wake the, those mounts, that's crazy. And you can fail it quite easily, I was lucky that I got the single stat one. You can buy it in the mall, in the grocery, in the other, uh, 20 diamonds each, so <laughs> it's pretty expensive, if we need what, 125 or 300 of those, that's quite a lot of diamonds, so I'd, I wouldn't recommend going this way, unless you are really, really wanna get that. You can also get Magic Crystal Pack over here in the guild store, mm, it's 1000 guild points each, and I think Mysterious Merchants sell them for cheaper. Yeah, you can get 10 specific uh, stat crystals for 1.8k, and this is without the sale, so it can go even cheaper with the sale, guys. So yeah, let's sum it up a little bit, uh, you want to have 60% move speed mount, not the 40% one like this prairie ship because they are pretty slow, and as long as you got one, you want to figure out which stat you're going for, and go either for the single stat, that will increase your chances of getting that one without failing, or risk it and try to go for this double stat, that lowers your chances quite a lot, but the rewards are way better in the end as well. I know in Ray Chan's video, she recommends going for 4% success because she's using the pay to win mounts, right? I don't have those, so I had to go for the free to play ones. So guys, free to players, we are in trouble here. <laughs> I really wouldn't recommend going for the double stat, I risked it and I thought that I will fail it miserably, but there we go, we got at least something. Let me know what do you think about this guide in the comments, guys. While you're going there, please leave a like to this video, subscribe to the channel and make sure that the bonnet and make sure that bell notifications are turned to all. Also join our Discord for our fantastic community, links are in the description and in the pinned command. Follow me on Twitch for live streams. I'm playing really hard games over there and on Sunday we have the multiplayer day where everyone can join and play together, that's pretty cool, you don't have to buy the game, I'm playing the games that are free for all. And yeah, follow my social medias, everything is over here in the pinned commands and in the description. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it, sweet out, see ya comrades. Bye.